Hello, I am Dr. Ashok Kumar. I am a consultant orthopedic surgeon and regenerative medicine expert. I am board certified from American Academy of Regenerative Medicine. And I am thankful doc to Dr. Lana for inviting me to give a talk on regenerative medicine in ortho Reason course 2020. Currently I'm practicing in Dubai. I'm primarily a joint replacement surgeon doing hip and knee and arthroscopic reconstruction. And for the last seven, eight years, I'm also practicing regenerative medicine for various musculoskeletal disorder. So in this lecture, we will discuss three adipose drive regenerative product, which are microfragmented adipose tissue, which is MAC, stromal vascular fraction, and culture expanded adipose drive stem cells. As we know, in 1969, the Kaplan gave the current popular terminology for the mesenchymal stem cell because he believed that their origin is from mesenchymal tissue, and they also have ability to show in vitro multipotency clonability, and there are, and he also believed that it was possible that these cell would convert into other different cell type like bone, cartilage, tendons, and ligaments. Over the next few decades, mesenchymal stem cell was the most common used terminology in the published literature, as well as during scientific meetings. And I can say that it was also starting being misused to some extent. And if you see the literature or the, uh, the material about regenerative treatment, then uh, we come, come across all kinds of stem cells starting from process lipoaspirate, adipose drive adult stem cells, or the adipose drive mesenchymal stem cell or the stromal cells. So because of so many uh, different uh, terminology in the literature and in the practice, the International Federation of Adipose Therapeutic and Science, they looked into this matter and uh, they proposed that they should be called as adipose drive stem cell. And only those cells should be called as ADSC who have a positive marker for CD90 CD105, CD73, this along with other mark like 44, 13, and 34. And this should be negative for CD31, 45, 56, and HLADR. Now, if we see that adipose drive stem cells, they are multipotent mesenchymal stem cells, which are capable of dividing itself and differentiating into the other cells like fat cell adipocytes, osteoblasts, or chondrocytes. If we see the opinion of the International Society for the Cellular Therapy, they have a little bit different opinion. And according to them, the mesenchymal stem cell is actually not a stem cell. It's actually a stromal cells, which means stromal cells are the supporting connective tissue, which are found in our body. And if a sense is coming from that, then it's called mesenchymal stromal cells. Now the Kaplan revisited his concept and uh, he agreed with the, uh, with the International Society for the Cellular Therapy. Okay, they are not a stem cell, but he did not agree that they are stromal cells. And he proposed a, another terminology called medicinal signaling cell. And because he said, as we know, that these cells are believed to act through different signals, releasing growth factors, so they should be called medicinal signaling cells. So we have on one side, the Kaplan, the medicinal signaling cell, and then we have international society who think that these are stromal cells and then we have International Federation, which term as a, which gives or define them as adipose drive stem cells. 
Now we also looked into this uh, confusion or different terminology being used in the literature. And also if somebody wants to know about the stem cell, how it works, what are they, there are different pieces of information which are available in different sites. There is not a single place where you can have a comprehensive or concise information, how they work actually, and what are the proper terminology. So this paper we publish in archive of bone and joint surgery, and it's available as abstract on the university general site, and it will be available as a full text soon. So in this paper, we propose because these cells are actually promoting healing. So this should be called as maintenance stem cell. Because when we use mesoderm, their origin may not be only just in the mesoderm because the research is going on and the source of these cells, the list is increasing every day with the research. Because these cells have been shown that outside the body, they are able to renew. They are able to divide and increase their numbers. And they are also able to differentiate in other cell type like the bone, cartilage, and adipocyte, which is a characteristic of the stem cell. So they basically acting by maintaining and promoting a regenerative environment by providing a non-inflammatory and immunomodulated healing environment, which we will discuss in subsequent slides. Now, what are the sources of adipose drive stem cells? So the most common source is the subcutaneous adipose tissue. You can take it from your tummy, from the front side. You can take from the buttock, the lower back, or even in from the thigh. Now, over the last uh, few uh, months, or we can say uh, recently it has been seen that we can also get these cells from infrapatellar and suprapatellar fat pad area. But these are basically the invasive procedure and you get these uh, adipose tissue when you're doing arthroscopic surgeries or you're doing open knee surgeries. And uh, those who have used these uh, source of adipose tissue, they have shown or they have proposed that the infrapatellar fat is more chondrogenic, more cartilage, favoring the cartilage formation, while the suprapatellar is more osteogenic and chondrogenic than the usual source of stem cell from bone marrow or subcutaneous drive stem cell, both in vivo and vitro. Now, if we just compare the adipose drive stem cell versus bone marrow, mesenchymal stem cell. So in the literature and it, there is some information and uh, the, it actually shows that the difference between adipose drive stem cell, that there's not much change in the number with increasing age. They have been shown that they are genetically more stable, having a high proliferative and differentiation capacity. They also have a lower senescent ratio and they have a longer telomere length. If you compare the number of the stem cell in per unit volume in adipose tissue, 2% of the entire cell population of lipoaspirate is actually the adipose drive stem cell. And the number of stem cell is around 500 to 2,500 times more pluripotent cells in equal volume of the bone marrow. The one ml of lipoaspirate has around either 100,000 to 1 million adipose drive stem cell. While if you see on the bone marrow side, one ml has 50 to 675 stem cell in one ml. But this is debatable because those who use bone marrow, they say the number may be less, but the quality is better. The colony forming unit are better in the bone marrow. And those who use adipocyte, they say it's easy, the number are more, they have better proliferation capacity. But the, those who use the bone marrow, they say no, the quality of coloniformic unit may not be better in adipose drive stem cells. So this is ongoing debate and the more studies will solve this uh, issue, which is the be best or the better source. 
Now let's talk about the, what is the pathogenesis of osteoarthritis? Actually in osteoarthritis, this, the innate immunity, the cells which are involved like macrophages, mast cells and natural killer cells, they play a central role. They start the pathogenesis of osteoarthritis and it is established as a joint and synovial pathology by the acquired immunity by B cells and T cells. So in osteoarthritis, there is actually an imbalance between a catabolic environment and the anabolic environment. So because of the more catabolic, there is increased level of interleukin-1, alpha tumor necrotic factor, which are the main factors starting, which are involved in osteoarthritis, and metallopeptide is 13, which lead to the increased level of interleukin-8, 6, and leukotrin inhibiting factors and prostaglandin E2, and which ultimately cause cartilage degradation and establish the osteoarthritis. Now in the same paper, we try to connect all these pieces of available information about the stem cell and how they work. So before we go into detail, we need to understand few concepts. One is pro-environment and anti-environment. Pro is anabolic environment, anti-environment is catabolic. So basically whenever there is a inflammation, injury, or some congenital issue or degeneration, usually there is an anti or catabolic environment. So in an anti-environment, the cells are more apoptotic, which means there is a more programmed cell death is going on. There is more inflammation, and this inflammation is not healing into a nice tissue, it's healing more fibrosis. And there's a less new vessel formation angiogenesis. Then we need to understand two things. We have local resident stem cell. In our body, we know that the lining of our intestine and in the skin, the epidermis after every week, it is renewed constantly. So who is doing this work? This is being done by local resident stem cell, which are not there just only in the skin or in the intestine. They are also in different organs and the body, with the body parts. So how actually uh, there is a controversy that, because controversy about how stem cell work when we inject, whether they are dying, or some of them surviving or whether they're really regenerating cartilage or whether they're really incorporating into the host tissue. So in this paper, basically we brought all these pieces information and we propose a mechanism that basically there are three steps in which the stem cell work. The first step is called the first induction response, which has three sub -component. So actually what happened when you implant, when you inject or implant a stem cells inside your body like knee or other part, what happened? Majority of these cells, they disappear or they die. But before doing that, they are able to do their work. How? By releasing growth factor, cytokines and extracellular vesicles. And some of those cells they are able to survive and under a anti-environment and hypoxic environment they get activated and then they start showing proliferation differentiation in a limited way and some of them also ultimately get incorporated into, into the host tissue so by these growth factor release from the dead implanted stem cell and the surviving stem cells, they start facilitate a pro-growth environment, which is basically the F, by releasing growth factor and cytokines, inhibiting inflammations, and they induce the local stem cell by supplying extracellular vesicles, which is basically a source of signal, energy, and local support. Now the local resident stem cells are usually weak in an anti environment they are weak, they are not able to heal, multiply and differentiate. But once they get some help from these new surviving implanted stem cell and the growth factors from the dead stem cells, they start following these implanted stem cells. 
So what happened? The number of cells is increased and there is a recruitment of new cells from the implanted and from the local resident stem cell. Now in the second step, this response continue. This is called sustained induction response, which means there is a sustained release of growth factors from the local resident stem cell and from the surviving implanted stem cells. More cells are being induced. There is a more recruitment. So this is the phase where the local resident stem cell are maximally active because they're dividing, they have energy, they have signal and they are not dying in so many numbers as they were doing in anti environment. But after some time, this, is start, this response shows a downward trend. This is called the limited induction response. Limited induction response means there is a limited release of growth factors because surviving implanted stem cell, they cannot divide after a certain number and they also become old and the same happen with the local resident stem cell. So once you inject a stem cell, it shows first induction response. It basically induces the local resident stem cell. It continue and then it wane. If you want to continue this response, you need to do a repeat injection. So how actually the stem cell are helping osteoarthritis? They are basically inhibiting a pro-inflammatory cytokines and to angiogenic factors. How they are doing? So basically, they produce a alpha tumor necrotic stimulating genes protein called TSG6, prostaglandin E2, IDO, and they prevent, they allow basically the conversion of M1 macrophages, which is pro-inflammatory, to M2, which is more immunosuppressive. They also uh, reduce the proliferation of the natural killer cells, also act on the macrophages, and they prevent the release of further inflammatory marker from macrophages like nitric oxide, alpha tuminoverty factor, and the interleukin-1. They also prevent the mast cell degeneration. So they are acting in all the cells of involved in innate immunity. Then the second aspect of uh, stem cell is immunosuppressive or immunomodulatory. So these stem cells, they provide an immunosuppressive environment by secreting interleukin-10, beta transforming growth factors. And because of this, the lipopolysaccharide stimulated macrophages, they do not release interleukin-1 and alpha tumor necrotic factors. They also inhibit the T cell proliferation by inhibiting the prostaglandin E2, also inhibit the differentiation of macrophages towards the dendritic cells. They inhibit the natural killer cells. They also inhibit the division of B cells. So they're acting all the component of active immunity. So in mesenchymal, uh, so the stem cell in osteoarthritis, they're promoting a pro-healing environment and it's basically through the exosomes, signals and the energy. Now, besides osteoarthritis, the adipose drive stem cells are being used in other medical issues like in the spine for degenerative disc, for critical limb ischemia, in cardiology for myocardial ischemia, heart failure, cardiomyopathy, and also in neurological disorder, degenerative neurological disorder like amyotropic lateral sclerosis, Alzheimer's, Parkinsonism, as well as in diabetes. Now, how, what does the literature say? What is the evidence about the fat stem cell or adipose drive stem cell? Well, the first randomized studies to see the efficacy and the safety was done by Julian and they published in 2019 in Regenerative Medicine. And uh, they basically took 30 patients having osteoarthritis of the knee they divided into three randomized group that in two group, they gave single injection of 100 million adipose drive cells or two injection of 100 million at zero baseline and after six months. But in the control group, they use only the conservative management. And the result at 12 months show that there was a statistically improvement in the pain function in both group versus the control group.
shown by the different scores. And they were also able to see that MRI shows that there is some modification of the disease. And they recommend that this is safe and effective and only minor side effects are seen. Are there any long-term follow-up study? This is one of the uh, case study done by Song et al. in 2018. And this is the first study which has a long, first long-term follow-up of 96 weeks. And they use, uh, again, for osteoarthritis, intraarticular injection. Initially, they used preclinically pre in the mice, and then they used in 18 patients, dividing into three doses, low dose, which is one uh, billion cell, then the mid dose, two billion, and high dose, which is five billion. And they found that human drive adipose mesenchymal stem cell are safe and effective. And they gave the same similar kind of uh, conclusion as given by the Julian. So if we analyze the literature and the published data, it's conflicting and debatable. But, but there is generally a consensus or most of the studies shows that stem cell improve the symptoms, improve the pain and improve the quality of the life. And the objectively, it also improve the scores in comparison to the placebo or the conventional treatment. And this uh, improvement lasts for one year, but some study shows two year, three year, even up to four year. But generally after the one year, it starts showing a downward trend. Route of administration, the most common route has been the intraarticular. There are some people we have used intralesional also, or they have used like an encapsulated integrated administration. Now, what is the dose? What is the dose which is being used uh, in osteoarthritis? I'll, again, the optimal dose is debatable and there are variable doses. Even if we see like, if we classify them like low, medium and high, the dose is even different. Somebody consider low at just 2.3 million while somebody consider like 50 billion. Same is for the medium and the high dose. But the effect seems to be better with a high dose than the low and the medium dose. Although there is one study which shows that even if you use a low dose like 2 million cells, the effect is as good as high dose. But of course, the result may be bet long lasting with a high dose. Now, some studies have seen in animal study that if you give a high dose, then the chances of free body formation in the scar is high. And if you use a low dose, then the response may be inadequate. How many injections we should give? Well, it varies from one to three injections, which have been shown effective in osteoarthritis. Does stem cell change the radiological finding or the imaging? Again, the, the result, the literature is showing variable result. And most of them, they say there may not be any improvement if you see the joint space or the alignment. Few studies have shown that there is improvement, but we should have a proper X-ray as um, the views which have been done before injection and after injection. Now, same is about the MRI. Now, many studies have shown that in the MRI, it modulates the cartilage. So edema may be less, the volume may be less, the density may be better. And these results are seen when you repeat MRI at one year or two year. Some studies say that the result may be more better if you combine with some kind of a minimal surgery or if you are doing like high osteotomy for various knee combining stem cell. <laughs> are stem cells safe? Yes, they are safe. If you use the uh, right kind of stem cell, right selection of the patient at right time and at the right place. The most common side effect which, which we have seen in the literature is the pain and swelling, which usually subside in first few days. And uh, then we have seen in some patients the dehydration and the pain. Usually when you are doing regenerative procedure, we don't recommend the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agent. So for pain and swelling, if you give paracetamol one gram, 
12 hourly or eight hourly, the patient usually they do well and they, the symptom resolve in few days. Serious complication, they have been reported, but they are not directly related to the stem cells like infection at the ileal crest, unstable angina, effusion and pulmonary embolism. So if you use a standard safe and aseptic technique for harvesting, if you're using culture expanded and if it is a reputed lab with good control on culture medium expansion, then the risk can be minimized. Theoretical risk of tumor formation has been usually claimed by the some pharma giant and some those who don't believe in a stem cell. But for the adult stem cell until now, there's no published report or evidence. If you use embryonic stem cell, which are able to divide into three different cell lineage and for a long time, yes, then there is a risk. But for the adult stem cell, no. The another issue with the stem cell is they are expensive. They take time, maybe one to two week. And of course, we need to control the quality of the cells in the lab and the regulatory issue because the FDA and usually the regulatory authority, they don't allow stem cells for osteoarthritis or for other musculoskeletal. Although now some clinical trial and under some universities have been approved by the regulatory authorities. So what is the future for the stem cell? Now adipose dry stem cell are being used with a scaffold, like if there is a full thickness cartilage defect, and if you use a biodegradable matrix as a scaffold embedded with the adipo, adipose dry stem cell, the result have been shown good. Now there is also attempt to use genome-free culture, like without animal drive antigens to produce large scale to make it more safe. Now 3D uh, printing has come up and the 3D culture of stem cell as a spheroid in hydrogel, they have been shown that it can improve and it can transfer the stem cell to a large targeted area. Now we will discuss about the microfragmented adipose tissue and the stromal vascular fraction, which are the two other adipose drive regenerative treatment. Now, if you compare the uh, microfragmented adipose tissue MAT or SVF, it is debatable. So basically the idea is the, in the MAT, it is a minimal manipulation, but for the SVF, it is more than minimal manipulation and the FDA even consider it as a drug. So in MAT, basically there is a mechanical separation. So we are we mechanically separating the stem cells. But in a stromal vesicular fraction, you are, it's mechanical centrifugation, and you are also using the enzymes like collagenase and protease to break down the matrix of the adipose tissue to release more stem cells. While in MAD, it's just the mechanical, and you are washing and you are cleansing and rinsing to get a product. So in MAD, it's basically take less time and in stromal vascular, it takes a little bit more time for processing, depending upon what kind of equipment you are using. Those who use mat, they say in the mat, because you are not breaking by enzyme, so you have an intact uh, stromal vascular knees, which are, which are basically having a lot of pericide, and the blood vessels like capillary, they are also intact, and they are not present in the SVF. So there is a matrix is also there in the mat, which is not there in the SVF. But those we use SVF, they say that when you are using enzymes, the residual enzyme, if you use proper technique, it may be negligible. So there may not be any side effect of the enzyme. Number two, that when you use MAD, you are not able to release the adequate number of stem cells because they're still entrapped. But when you use SVF, the number of stem cell is more, and it is not just the stem cell. There are so many other cells and growth factors are there. And therefore they say that the SVF may be more better than the MAD. But the issue is debatable. And I think the both product they work, one may be having advantage over the other because of uh, ease of uh, preparing the product and regulatory aspect. So 
if we see the SVF, SVF is a heterogeneous mixture of cells. So it has adipose drive stem cell, it has mesenchymal cell, it also have pericytes with other healing cells and uh, which help in healing and like macrophages, fibroblasts. Then it has cells which promote angiogenesis like endothelial cells, smooth muscle cells and their progenitor. And of course they have growth factor and cytokines. So because of the presence of the stem cell, growth factor, cytokines, healing cells, progenitor cell, SVF has been hailed as a promising treatment for different areas. Now, what actually is SVF is doing? Because of those composition of the stem cells, they have been shown that they have anti-inflammatory effect. They're angiogenic, they promote healing and repair, and they are immunosuppressive. Now, what is the clinical evidence for the SVF? Well, the, the, the studies we have used SVF or osteoarthritis, they have shown that improve the pain and function and the symptom, improve the score. And it also has a potential of cartilage remolding and regeneration, more or less same as we see with the culture expanded stem cells. There are some issues, they say it's empirical therapy. There are no proper trial, but now some trial are going on. FDA consider it as a drug. It's like more than minimal manipulation. And the another issue is the enzymes. Although uh, they say if you use the proper technique, there may not be residual, but those who, do, who oppose the SVF, they say no, there may be some residual uh, collagenase and which may go into the systemic circulation and may have some harmful effects for the cartilage in its structures, which may be some vital structures in our body. And another thing is a heterogeneous mixture. So basically we need to understand that when we are talking about the adipose dry products, there are three things, whether it is a stem cell. So stem cell means whether it is a culture expand, expanded stem cell, or it is a microfragmented adipose tissue, or it is a stromal vascular fat. So SVF and the MAD, they may be, we may say them, they are like a cell-based regenerative treatment and they have stem cell, they have growth factors, they have cytokines. Now we use uh, adipose drive stem cell and the mat for osteoarthritis. Like this is one of the patient having bilateral osteoarthritis of the knee. Now in these patient, we use uh, intraosseous because now we know there is a subchondral uh, crosstalk between in osteoarthritis and uh, if we inject the subchondral bone, then the effect is better and the response is better. Usually what we do, we combine, we take the, we do mini liposuction. We take the product, which is around 100 to 120 ml. And then some of, the, of that part we use as a mat combined with uh, bone marrow concentrate and PRP. And if the patient wants, we send it to the lab and in the lab, they grow it as a culture in the culture and uh, then it become a adipose drive stem cell and later on when the patient come for the follow-up then we do serial injection for adipose drive stem cell injections. So the take-home message is adipose drive stem cell are multipotent stem cell. They have a capability for self renewal, differentiation into different lineages, not just chondrocyte, myocyte, even like neuroside and many more lineages are being dis uh, discovered with a more research. They're more easily accessible. You can, multi you can expand them easy in a rapid way and they're able to retain their phenotype for a longer time. The number of stem cells are more in a unit volume when you compare with the corresponding bone marrow, like 500, 2005 times more. One ML contain more than like 100,000 to 1 million cells. Usually one to three injections uh, of variable dose, but even as low as 2.3 million cell, even to high dose one billion cell have been shown, but two million is also good. Usually in our practice, we use uh, 20 million cells per joint. Now they improve pain function and the score. 
they are expensive time consuming and of course there is a problem regarding contamination quality the mat and svf they are important alternative they are affordable less expensive svf has more stem cell than the mat and those we use mat they say the mat has more cellular or more intact uh, stroma knees svf because the size uh, you can size is small so you can product the final product size is small you can even use for iv infusion and they have been shown to improve pain function and the cartilage so stay safe follow the guidelines and uh, regenerative medicine is the upcoming branch it is evolving and uh, there are different kind of regenerative treatment from bone marrow from adipose tissue also there are some division now they are helping a lot of patient already a lot of patient have been helped and we all have to come together on a single platform with evidence based knowledge and information so that more and more practitioner they can incorporate regenerative medicine in their practice and the regulatory authorities and the patient they can get more confidence we can more define it in a better way with more training thank you